Greetings, friends. Good morning. Welcome back to the broadcast. I'm Sean. Today we are looking to start our week with some wisdom, some encouragement from the Psalms and from the Proverbs. We're going to be looking at Psalm 83 today and Psalm 84, along with Proverbs chapter 10. Now, Psalm 83 is a psalm that is just really speaking to me this morning. The psalmist is praying for God's intervention. Praying for God to intervene on behalf of the righteous. On behalf of his remnant. Or as the psalmist calls them, the hidden ones. And then Psalm 84 has uh, got some famous verses in it. It's very short, which is why we're adding it on today. Uh, but it's got some verses that you've heard before and that I pray are going to resonate with you this morning. Now, if you're wondering why the podcast episode is coming out late this morning, it's because this is my second time recording it. The first time something went wrong. I'm not sure what happened. Uh, but hopefully, hopefully everything is resolved. I tell you, there's just... And, and again, maybe I'm over-spiritualizing things, but the enemy is just working hard against this work right now. So your prayers and support is, is, is desperately needed. All right, let's see if we can get some encouragement, and then we'll move on to the Proverbs. Psalm 83 and 84, open up your hearts and see what the Word of God might have to say for you, to you, this morning. Let's begin. King James Bible. Keep not thou silence, O God. Hold not thy peace, and be not still, O God. For lo, thy enemies make a tumult, and they that hate thee have lifted up the head. They have taken crafty counsel against thy people and consulted against thy hidden ones. They have said, Come, let us cut them off from being a nation, that the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. For they have consulted together with one consent, they are a confederate against thee. The tabernacles of Edom, and the Ishmaelites of Moab, and the Hargreenians, Gebal, and Ammon, and Amalek, the Philistines with the inhabitants of Tyre, Aser also adjoined with them. They have Hoplon, the children of Lot. Selah. Do unto them as unto the Midianites, as to Caesarea, as to Jabin, at the brook of Kisan, which perished at Endor. They became as dung for the earth. Make their nobles like Oreb and like Zeb. Yea, all their princes as Zeba and as Zal Muna, who said, Let us take to ourselves the house of God in possession. O oh my God, make them like a wheel, as stubble before the wind. As fire burneth a wood, and as the flame setteth the mountains on fire, so persecute them with thy tempest, and make them afraid with thy storm. Fill their faces with shame, that they may seek thy name, O Lord. Let them be confounded and troubled forever, yea, let them be put to shame and perish, that men may know that thou whose name alone is Jehovah art the most high over all the earth. And so there's Psalm 83. And it just resonates with me because I feel like what the psalmist is saying. Like, Lord, where are you? Don't be silent anymore. The wicked are conspiring against your people, against your hidden ones. Do something, Lord. Do something in our day that's so great, so powerful, that we wouldn't believe it even if we were told. That men may know that thou, that, that the name alone of Jehovah is the most high over all the earth now let's look at Psalm 84 there's been songs written from this 
It's a reminder of how great it is to be in God's presence. To be a child of God as opposed to the wicked. Let's read it. Twelve verses. Psalm 84. How amiable are thy tabernacles, O Lord of hosts! My soul longeth, yea, even fainteth for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh crieth out for the living God. Yea, the sparrow hath found a house, and the swallow a nest for herself, where she may lay her young. Even thy altars, O Lord of hosts, my King and my God. Blessed are they that dwell in thy house. They will be still praising thee, Selah, who passing through the valley of Baca make a well. The rain also filleth the pools. They go from strength to strength, every one of them, and Zion appeareth before God. O Lord God of hosts, hear my prayer. Give ear, O God of Jacob, Selah. Behold, O God, our shield, and look upon the face of thy anointed. For a day in thy courts is better than a thousand. I had rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than to dwell in the tents of wickedness. For the Lord God is a sun and shield. The Lord will give grace and glory. No good thing will he withhold from them that walk uprightly. O Lord of hosts, blessed is the man that trusteth in thee. So there's Psalm 84, a reminder to trust God. Put your trust in. Listen, if you're hoping for a politician or somebody to rescue you, uh, rescue the world from this current situation, it ain't happening. God is the only hope we have. The psalmist says, "A day in the, just one day in your courts is better than a thousand days." Better than dwelling in the tents of the wicked. He says, I would rather be a doorkeeper than to dwell in the tents of wickedness. The Lord will give grace and glory. No good thing will he withhold from them that what? That breathe air? That just exist? Because that's what modern day Christianity teaches, right? Oh, you you breathe air, you exist, God loves you, you're going to be blessed. What does it say? No good thing will he withhold from them that walk uprightly. Blessed is the man that trusteth in thee. I pray that this has encouraged you this morning. Let's look at Proverbs here. Proverbs chapter 10. It's a continuation of the folly of the wickedness in contrast with the wisdom of the righteous. Let's see what the Word of God has to say for us this morning. Verse 1. The Proverbs of Solomon. A wise son maketh a glad father. But a foolish son is the heaviness of his mother. Treasures of wickedness profit nothing, but righteousness delivereth from death. The Lord will not suffer the soul of the righteous to famish, but he casteth away the substance of the wicked. Please note, the Bible talks about multiple places. This theme, this idea... That God's people aren't going to be starving. David said, I've been rich and poor and young and old. I've never seen the righteous begging for bread. Jesus said, look, God's feeding sparrows. How much more important are you?
the Lord will not suffer the soul of the righteous to famish, but he casteth away the substance of the wicked. Verse 4. He becometh, he becometh poor that dealeth with a slack hand. In other words, laziness. But the hand of the diligent maketh rich. He that gathereth in the summer is a wise son, but he that sleepeth in the harvest is a son that causeth shame. Blessings are upon are upon the head of the right I'm sorry. Blessings are upon the head of the just, but violence covers the mouth of the wicked. The memory of the just is blessed, but the name of the wicked shall not shall rot. The wise in heart will receive commandments, but a pratting fool shall fall. He that walketh uprightly walketh surely, but he that perverteth his ways shall be known. He that winketh with the eye causes sorrow, but a prating fool shall fall. The mouth of a righteous man is a well of life, but violence covereth the mouth of the wicked. Hatred stirs up strifes, but love covereth all sins. In the lips of him that hath understanding, wisdom is found, but a rod is for the back of him that is void of understanding. Wise men lay up knowledge, but the mouth of the foolish is near destruction. The rich man's wealth is his strong city. The destruction of the poor is their poverty. The labor of the righteous tendeth to life, the fruit of the wicked to sin. He is in the way of life that keepeth instruction, but he that refuses reproof erreth. He that hideth hatred with lying lips, and he that othereth a slander is a fool. In the multitude of words there is wanteth not sin. But he that refraineth his lips is wise. Please note. We talk about this all the time because when the Proverbs and the Psalms talk about this all the time, and this is this idea about keeping your mouth shut. You don't always need to be heard. You don't always need to be right. The world doesn't always need your opinions. You see, a wise person doesn't gossip doesn't always have to be heard. They keep their mouth shut. They refrain words. They have self-control. We all know that person that just can't shut their mouth, right? Especially when they get flustered or get upset. They just can't let it go. They just, they just keep going. Or the know-it-all who's always got to be heard, always got to be right. Those people are fools, according to the scriptures. It's the person who has restraint with their lips. That's the wise, godly person. Again, verse 18 and 19. He that hideth hatred with lying lips, and he that uttereth a slander is a fool. In the multitude of words there wanteth not sin, but he that refraineth his lips is wise. Verse 20. The tongue of the just is a choice silver, but the heart of the wicked is of little worth. The lips of the righteous feed many, but fools die for want of wisdom. The blessing of the Lord, it maketh rich, and he addeth to sorrow, he addeth no sorrow with it. It is as a sport to a fool to do mischief, but a man of understanding hath wisdom. The fear of the wicked, it shall come upon him, but the desire of the righteous shall be granted. As the rule wind passes, so is the wicked no more. But the righteous is an everlasting foundation. You see, the scriptures teach, Jesus teaches, that the righteous will inherit the earth. That the wicked are like grass. Here today, gone tomorrow. The, wi- the righteous are an everlasting foundation. But like a whirlwind passes, the wicked are no more. Verse 26, As vinegar is to teeth, 
and as smoke is to the eyes, so is the slugger to them that, them that send him. The fear of the Lord prolongeth days, but the years of the wicked shall be shortened. The hope of the righteous shall be gladness, but the expectation of the wicked shall perish. The way of the Lord is strength to the upright, but destruction shall be to the workers of iniquity. The righteous shall never be removed, but the wicked shall not inhabit the earth. See, there it is, right there in the Proverbs. Let me read it again. The righteous shall never be removed, but the wicked shall not inhabit the earth. Two more verses. The mouth of the just bringeth forth wisdom, but the froward tongue, in other words, the perverse tongue, shall be cut out. The lips of the righteous know what is acceptable, but the mouth of the wicked speaketh frowardness. In other words, perversion. Well, there you have it, my friends. There is wisdom and encouragement from the Psalms and the Proverbs to start our week. And I pray in the powerful name of Jesus that it's went forth and pierced hearts and it's causing you to draw closer to him. Now, real quick, as I close, I realize the podcast has been coming out kind of sporadic and different times and all that stuff. A lot of that's been out of my control, being sick, work schedule's been different. This morning, the podcast, uh, for whatever reason, didn't save properly the first time. Just a lot of (laughs) obstacles lately. But Lord willing, we'll be back on our normal schedule Wednesday. Uh, But just a reminder that your prayers are much needed. Your support is much needed. This broadcast is 100% listener supported. So please continue to pray. Please Please continue to share the podcast. And please consider supporting it. Thank you for listening, my friends. Peace and grace be with all of you. And until next time, God bless.